Locomotion and teleportation movement are perhaps the two most common ways of being able to move from one point to another within a virtual world. But there's another way that we can navigate around these worlds too. Auto navigation. This is more of a combination between these two. Basically the player will be able to choose where they want to navigate to or you can choose for them. And the player will automatically navigate from where they are to where this second point is. Allowing for more of a combination between these two. So in this tutorial, I wanna show you exactly how we can set this up. But before we jump into the tutorial, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so here we are. I've possessed my auto navigate uh, character. And I can actually tell because you'll see in the tutorial later on that I actually set up a line trace that goes out of my uh, right hand. So you can actually see that. Um, and that's actually my line trace that goes out a thousand units, if I recall. So, um, yeah, so obviously when I shoot out into the air, we're going to set it so that way it doesn't do anything if it does not hit anything. And the reason for this is if we try to navigate, but we don't actually give it a point, it actually, from what I can tell, seems to go more towards wherever the world origin is, which you probably don't want to do in most cases. So that's why we're going to be setting it up in the tutorial so that way if you don't hit anything, nothing's going to happen whatsoever. Now, if we do hit something, however, so let, let's take it nice and simple. Let's say I mark right on over here, then my character is going to move over. Now, I'm not quite at the center of my character, so that's why I'm a little bit off. That's roughly where the center of my character is. But um, yeah, so wherever I move to, that's where I'm going to automatically navigate to. And this will also go for around other obstacles as well. So if I hit on the other side, it's going to bring me around and then go ahead and bring me to wherever that target point is. And I can also go and hit the wall and it'll navigate me to as close as possible to that point as possible. So it, this can be used just about everywhere. Um, you know, if you want to be able to just automatically find a spot close to the wall, for example, or you want to be able to navigate around obstacles, or um, th this can also go around multiple obstacles. It, you know, it doesn't have to be just the one, you know, uh, cube or whatever, but uh, yeah, we, we can just kind of use this to navigate around everything uh, however we, we would like. So this will automatically just go to wherever we need to go and then just stop and it'll automatically find the path from wherever we are to wherever we want to go and this doesn't have to just be with line trace if you have like an arc or something that you're that you would prefer to use that would work as well you just need to change around that target location you'll see that in the tutorial if you'd like to go ahead and change that around for yourself so uh yeah so let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and i can show you exactly how you can do this for yourself first things first let's talk about what you need to do to your environment your environment needs to have a nav mesh bounds volume set up within it. This will allow for our player to determine how they can navigate from one point to another. If you want to see how players are able to navigate around your environment as well, you can go ahead and hit P on your keyboard and this will allow for you to see what your nav mesh currently looks like. Next, we need to create our character. In order to do this, you want to go ahead and create a new blueprint class and this has to be of type character. Once you have your character created, go ahead and make sure you have a camera as well as two motion controllers for your VR character. Of course, all these aren't necessary for any VR character, whether it be a pawn or a character or something else altogether, but you need to make sure that you have these components and they're all set up per just like you need them to. This means that making sure that your right motion controller has the right motion source set and that device models are all being set for your motion controllers. The camera should automatically track your HMD or your head mounted display. This will be your VR headset. So you shouldn't need to do anything to that, but you will need to make sure that your motion controllers are all set up correctly. Also, if you're not going to make sure that your capsule component is falling around your character correctly right now, you also want to make sure that your capsule component is set to a one by one radius. This will just make sure that our player is a little bit closer to the correct height that we need it to be, but that it will still have collision to the floor as well as be able to navigate around the environment. With that all the way, now let's jump into the event graph for our VR character. 
In here, we first need to be able to determine where we want our player to navigate to. And in this case, we want to set up so that way our player is able to determine where it is that they want to navigate to. In order to do this, I'm going to go and grab the input action trigger, right? If you're using the default VR template, you should have this available to you. But if you don't, then you need to go ahead and head into your project settings and input and add this in yourself. Then in here, we need to do a line trace by channel. This is going to allow for us to do just a straight line and hit the ground so that way we're able to determine where we want our player to navigate to. In a line trace by channel, we first need to set up a start and an end point. The start point is going to be our motion controller right and this is going to be the world location of our motion controller right. Our end value can be found using our get forward vector of our get controller right. We can find this by getting the forward vector from our motion controller and then multiplying this by some value. This value will determine how far our line trace extends to and then we add this onto the world location. If you would like, you can also go ahead and set a draw debug type. This isn't necessary if you don't want the line trace to be visible, but for testing purposes, I'm going to go ahead and set this to be, a, to be enabled for a duration. The next, we want to make sure our return value is valid. The reason for this is if we don't have a valid return value and we try to navigate to whatever point we hit, it actually won't find anything. So it'll try to navigate to the origin point of our world. From our hit result, we want to get the out hit location and we want to find path to location synchronously. The out hit location is going to go into the path end and our actor's current location is going to go into our path start. What this will allow for us to do is this will allow for us to actually find what the path is that we need to get to get from our current point to the target point that we just hit. This will also make sure that we'll automatically navigate out of the way of any sort of obstacles or small little uh, inconveniences that we may have between our current point and the target point that we just hit. After we found this path to location syn synchronously, go ahead and grab the return value and we wanna get the path points. Then go and take these path points and promote them to a variable because we'll need them in a second step in the event tick. Now before we actually go ahead and add in the code that we need to our event tick, we're going to go and create a new function that we're going to be using in our event tick. And this function is going to allow for us to actually navigate from our current point to the target point using this path that we just found. To do this, go and create a new function. Then in our function, we need to get the actor location and then we also need to get our path points variable that we just made. From this path points array, we want to get the first point on our path points array. This will allow for us to find what the first location that we need to navigate to is. Using our actual location and our first path point, go ahead and find look at rotation and we want to find the look at rotation between our actual location and this path point. Then go ahead, using this find look at rotation, get the forward vector so that way we have a vector that we're able to use. Using this forward vector, we'll want to add a movement input and the forward vector is going to go in as our world direction. Then we also want to go ahead and set a scale value. Now this is important, this scale value will allow for you to determine how fast you move from one point to another. This can be important for example for comfort if we want our player to not move quite as fast or we want the player to maybe even have a little bit more control over how fast they move uh, along this path that we've navigated for them. Next, we want to go ahead and compare our actor location and our path point that we are currently running to, and we want to see how close they are. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and check to see if these two are equal, and I'm also going to go ahead and modify the air tolerance, and I'm going to set this to 10 for this example. In case you're unfamiliar with the air tolerance value, what this will allow for us to do is it'll allow for us to have a little bit more leniency in how far away these two values can be. The greater the, the, the air tolerance is, the further away these values can be. That's why I personally choose 10. It allows for our values to be a little bit further apart and they don't need to be exactly one another. Once you've found an air tolerance that you like, go ahead and pass this into a branch right after the add movement input. 
And if this is true, we're going to want to get our path point and we want to remove index zero. By doing so, this will allow for us to go ahead and remove the current point that we are navigating to because we've now gotten close enough to this point and we're ready to move on to the next one. Once you've done this, go ahead and return back to your event tick. And here in the event tick, now we're finally ready to put this navigation function to the test. Go ahead and navigate to wherever your event tick is in the event graph. Then in here, we want to go ahead and get our path points. And we want to check to see if the length is greater than or equal to one. If it is, then that means that we are, we have some kind of path that we want to be able to follow. So we want to go ahead and run that navigation function. Once you've completed this event tick, you're now all good to go. All that's left is to go ahead and place the, this new VR character into the scene and go ahead and make sure that our player will automatically possess this new VR character so that way we're able to use all this new functionality that we just put into it. And with that, we're now able to automatically navigate from one point to another using this new VR character. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick sh shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.